Not bad. I think today we're going to do re-engineering and mixing things together. Hey everyone, how's it going? So, if you've watched my previous videos, this top rack is basically full of Vega 56s, 64s, and one Vega FE. And they are all mining Ergo. And they are running on my Xeon Phi 7210 motherboard using two 4-in-1 adapters. Because this motherboard does not have nearly enough PCIe slots. What I want to try today is an alternative for other people instead of getting mining motherboards this is a bundle that i get from micro center it's a relatively cheap asrock b450m pro 4 motherboard it's micro atx and a 3900x cpu cooler comes with it only thing you have to add i picked up one of their 64 gig nvme drives which has no cash but who cares it's just a boot drive for hive os i think that was like 23 dollars and then maybe like an extra 40 or 50, I think it was like $58 for two 8 gig sticks of the cheap G Skill 3200 megahertz RAM. So, this bundle right here is like $550, $600. Basically, a graphics card that you can CPU mine on it. And it also has two X16 slots and one 1X slot. I want to see if this will be a viable alternative for people who are already going to spend three to four hundred dollars right now for a mining motherboard and then throw a cheap Celeron into it that you can't do anything with but GPU mine. How about CPU mining with this using these two 4-in-1 adapters and then also doing all ergo. So this is going to take me at least a half an hour to get that motherboard out, get this one in there and then get all the rat's nest taken care of at least enough for testing. So I will be back uh, now. Okay, so it didn't quite go according to plan. I swapped out the motherboard, tried to put this in its original spot where the Xeon Phi was, uh, because actually that's sitting underneath the paper towels underneath there right now. And um, yeah, the motherboard kind of smoked immediately. The thing was, there's nothing shorting out underneath of it, no weird standoffs, but I don't think you're gonna be able to see it on that little chip right there in the lower left-hand corner. You can see a burn mark something with the power stages all of a sudden started frying and i didn't change anything nothing shorted i just don't think it's uh survived the transport over here so since this board is dead and most likely going back to micro center for rma instead of using that b450 i have another board b450 it's almost the exact same thing is an asrock b450m slash ac so it has wi-fi built onto it so the Wi-Fi is right here. It's essentially the same board, but we don't have the X1 slot anymore because the X1 slot is actually being used by the Wi-Fi. All we have is two X16s. So since this is a new motherboard, reusing the old CPU, the SSD, and the RAM sticks, hopefully nothing got fried in the process. Uh, I got a 1X adapter for the time being to my Vega FE with a screen so I can program the BIOS. So. Let's turn it on and see if we get more smoke. <laughs> Flip on. Okay, it's powering on. No smoke. Let's see if we get something from the screen. Hopefully nothing else fried. Now, if this does work correctly, it probably will take 10 to 15 seconds for it to do the memory timing first before it even actually gives me a screen. So, I'm not worried yet. Okay, let me turn this off and see what the deal is now. <clears throat> Success, we got the BIOS in the new motherboard. Apparently the CPU and the RAM is perfectly fine. Um, massive noob oversight. I saw when I put power onto it that the fan, CPU fan was spinning and it was lighting up automatically thinking the motherboard was actually on. No, since it's a brand new motherboard, that option in the BIOS to tell it to always turn on when power is applied to it is not set yet. So even though I looked like the motherboard was on, it wasn't. So I had to short the power pins real quick. She fired right up. So let me go through the BIOS, get this all set up and see if she boots up in the hive. 
Okay, so I got all the overclocks all set up, moved over from the Xeon Phi onto Nick Fury motherboard, which was originally sitting here before all this. It's over here in the center now, and it's running perfectly on two X16 slots on the motherboard, which have the four to one adapters. That's it. So it is definitely a viable way of getting eight GPUs on a micro ATX AMD motherboard without having to go through all the hassle of finding a mining motherboard for three to $400. Spend an extra 150, get a 3900X, eight gigs or 16 gigs of RAM, and do CPU mining at the same time. Okay, finally got everything running. I got the eight Vegas running on the regular micro ATX AMD motherboard which only has two X16 slots and the four to one adapters. My Xeon Phi is now pushed over to the side here and it is literally just the CPU. I will be upgrading this from the 7210 to the 7290, but with the motherboard frying, I had to use the last of my uh, thermal paste uh, to handle these CPUs. So that's gonna have to wait for a day or two. And everything on the bottom is still basically the same. So it's been a very interesting day. It definitely did not go flawlessly, but um, didn't even get a chance to install the 6600 XT. But again, I also have another card coming in the mail tomorrow. So I think I'm gonna wait for two days and then I'm gonna install both of those cards at the same time. And I gotta clean up my big mess here, go on home, make dinner, and call it a day. So thanks for watching for this little update. It definitely shows you, you can use regular consumer motherboards to mine on eight GPUs. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below or come join us over at the Mining Misfit Discord. Myself and plenty of other people there can easily answer your questions for you. Link for that is also down in the video description. And I will see you on the next video.